The following guide is catered towards the 987. Model years 2005 to 2012. This guide is intended to complement existing walkthroughs for the 986 and not be a comprehensive guide. We will insert reference links for anything lacking in detail here. This guide is tailored to the 987 because existing guides focus on the 986 and there are distinct differences to be aware of. It is recommended to watch the existing guides and this video in its entirety before proceeding to have all of the information. On my 987, the clutch suddenly failed. This is common at 80,000 to 100,000 miles. It turned out to be the release bearing and pressure plate. Linked below are threads on this topic to diagnose your issue if you think it is your clutch as well. The description will contain parts, tools, additional guides, and additional information. Depending on how prepared you are, this can either be a fun and rewarding project or a miserable experience. This video assumes prior knowledge on staying organized with bolts and parts and staying safe. See the channel for tips on the above topics. If anything is missing, please point it out and comment below. As people comment, materials will be added to a shared Google Drive. P.S. There's no music in this video. That is as intended. I know high production, high quality YouTube videos do have music. In case you have to rewind certain parts multiple times, it'll get real annoying real fast. So, sorry for any dry parts in advance. Chapter 1. Jack up the vehicle. See reference number 1 for jacking up your vehicle. Pro tips. Loosen the rear wheel lugs before jacking up, and don't forget your wheel chocks. Vision swap, you don't want just a low profile. With the long reach one, you can directly go where you can see the bolts, one, two, three, four, and I aim between those two bolts. We have a time lapse here. Basically, you can use one or two jack tools and simultaneously jack up the vehicle using the aluminum braces between those two bolts pointed out. And here, even though we have two jack tools, we'll use one just to show that it's doable with one. Chapter two, remove the rear wheels. These are pretty straightforward and have 19 millimeter lugs. An impact driver speeds this up. Chapter three, remove the exhaust, see the link. This is not a complete exhaust guide. What you're about to see is an aftermarket sole performance exhaust, so definitely check out the reference. Stock exhaust has difficult three bolts. Same T20 head on some of the screws here. Same 10 millimeter to undo those guys. So there we have the new exhaust, and here we have the three flange bolts. You can see it's not the most easiest thing in the world. This is easier by holding it from both ends. On the stock exhaust, there are basically studs that you have to cut out. This flexible thing was an absolute lifesaver. So once we get these four bolts off on either side, then we'll take the exhaust right out. This part's easier if you have a set of helping hands. One man loosens the bolts while the other holds the exhaust, and then you simply drop it. Chapter four, raise the vehicle to transmission drop height. The minimum height to drop the transmission was around 20 inches. Stay safe during this procedure. If we had to do it again, we could get away with around 16 inches. If you haven't already, see my other video on how to build these blocks if you don't have quick jacks or two post lift. At this point, we're basically opening the garage to carry them in from the basement where we built them. And here we're getting the car ready. First, you're going. these are modular, so you're going to want to lift one side of the car halfway, lower it, then raise the other side, the front side of the car, raise it all the way, and finally raise the back and insert the modular pieces and get it up all the way in the back as well. Chapter five, remove the underbody panel. You'll also see me remove the wheel arch trim, but that's optional. So next, the underbody panels are coming off. That silver bracket is under these underbody panels. Same T20 here, one here, and one here for this body panel. Here it's interlocked, so you have to be careful not to break it. I'm just gonna wiggle it out. 
this little clip goes such that there's a little gap here, clips onto the body. While we're here on the driver's side, I've also removed a T20 because I'm going to remove this underbody panel. All it is is one T20 here, one possible plastic T10 here, hex 10 here, hex 10 over there, all plastic, and then we're done. It's important to mention that I will remove that side first, and then I'll move this central hex 10 so that this panel doesn't bend this way and possibly break over there. That's probably why I had to replace it in the first place. Somebody took all the bolts, all the stuff off this way, and then just it bent here. So also while we're on this side, we can actually start and go ahead and remove this bolt, which is a 15 millimeter, which holds this metal bracket. One, two, three, etc. This is the part that's normally hard if you have a regular two post lift, and this is where these wooden lifts came in handy. This bolt is out. Let's go to the other side, get that trim off, and also remove this bolt on the complementary side. Let's make sure we don't get smushed. For now, I'm going left to right, driver's side, passenger side. The cardboard, you label everything, and then plug the screws and bolts into the cardboard. Chapter 6, removing the aluminum braces. Brace bolts at the end should have already been removed. With the farthest bolt removed, let's go ahead and finish removing the driver's side and the passenger side metal support bars. Here's what the vehicle looks like underneath without the metal support. Chapter seven, remove the aluminum shield. After we've removed the metal brackets, we're going to remove this cover. So this cover is held on by one, two, three, four bolts. And these bolts are all 15s. Better look at the transmission. Oh, that's exciting. Chapter eight, remove the reinforcing brace. The next step is where, I hate it in YouTube videos, when they look at a bolt and they know they're looking at a bolt, but they don't actually point out what bolt they're looking at. This is also a 15, this is also a 15, as well as that is also a 15. I recommend using a couple of extensions. There we go. Chapter 9. Remove the exhaust bracket. By simply undoing these four 15 millimeter bolts at the rear to the tranny. Chapter 10. Disconnecting the drive axles. Six sockets required. The next part is detaching the wheel drive axles. This guy, CV axle from the transmission herself. So that's going to be, I think, seven or eight of these guys. And it is a size eight Allen key. I'm gonna take these off. This just slides right out. This came off like this. We take this and it's literally detached from the transmission. I can squeeze this a little bit and put it wherever I want to. We want to remade it, we just mash them up and remade it. And with that, both of the CV axles are disconnected on the transmission. The wheels are still on. Chapter 11, disconnect the reverse sensor Transmission reverse detection connector thingy on the 987.1 2006. The reverse light connector is on the passenger side. And all I did was I got my fingernail under this, lifted this. This creaked open after years of not using it. And then with my fingernail continually pressing, I just wiggled it. And it came right off and this is what it looks like on the inside. Chapter 12, remove the sway bar. We could have done this earlier as well. 
So at this point, we need to remove the sway bar. We could have also done it earlier in the process. And for this, you need a T27 Torx bit. As you can see, at least on my 2006 model, I'm going to hold this with a screwdriver here and then use a 15 millimeter wrench to remove this nut. And now, the other side. So the same thing over there. Pro tip, if the sway bar bolt is stuck, first loosen it with a torque wrench, just get it to move, and then proceed with the removal. Sway links disconnected over there on either side. These two bolts, not this one. Otherwise, if you're on the wheels, bad things will happen. These two bolts on the driver's side, and the same two bolts on the passenger side. This guy and this guy, not this guy. And the sway bar should have come right off. One of the big differences for the 987 and chapter 13, do not remove the slave cylinder. Don't struggle with it, just don't do it. Just bleed the hydraulics. So online, in one of the videos, it's pretty straightforward. They remove the slave cylinder by pulling out because none of this mechanism with the rusty bolt that you're looking at in the middle right is in the w is none of that is in the way. This is how I'm going to try and remove the bolt. hopefully that will allow us to actually get to the slave cylinder to remove it. And there is no way we're removing the slave cylinder from under all of this shift gear linkage. Disconnect this black hydraulic line attached to the rusted bolt, the black tube coming out of the rusted bolt. And then might as well, while we're there, bleed the clutch system with the brake fluid. For now we'll just block it off and then we'll bleed the entire clutch system. So that is why I got two liters brake fluid. Complementary jobs are to bleed the brakes and bleed the clutch at the same time. So I can't hold the camera at the same time as performing this procedure, but basically on this black line going into this pinkish bolt, I'm going to unscrew that. And then as brake fluid is pouring out, I'm gonna, I picked out an assortment of these rubber caps. I'm going to try to my best to quickly cap up this black line so not too much brake fluid comes out. I will also preemptively put this bucket underneath where I think the brake fluid will leak. And then we'll go from there. Okay. So this is the current situation. I'm not gonna sugarcoat it. These were all rusted. And me having removed the bolt that bolted the slave cylinder in place, what turned out to be a massive mistake. The slave cylinder actually looks like it's a newer part. I soaked this all in brake fluid cause all the bolts were rusted on and they were terrible to remove. In the end, we decided to, first you can bleed the system dry. That went wrong because it was all all didn't work for us. But anyways, you could bleed the entire system dry. And once it's devoid of fluid, then you can pull off the main line as well. But that was rusted on, so that was a challenge. And anyways, now that the slave cylinder is disconnected, I'm gonna put the link mechanism, rusty nut back on, and we're going to proceed with the removal of the transmission. Chapter 14, disconnecting the shift cables. Pro tip, use a flathead screwdriver for leverage. If they're stuck, grab them with pliers and wiggle. And the Pelican part, like, literally this took me a few days of taking breaks and getting this off. As you can see, I broke off all the stuff on the cable itself, the brackets, but that's okay because it's still a ultra uber tight fit back in. Like I'll have to like tap it lovingly with a hammer to get it back in with a mallet, with a rubber mallet. But the best trick to get these out of the bracket, which as you can see, mine has like rusted and is difficult to do. You get yourself nice gloves like this. 
And then in all the YouTube videos I found, they basically just grabbed it like this, about three rungs down, and then they just pulled it out, and this was enough. In my case, as you saw my bracket, it was all rusted. This was not enough. You can see by the Home Depot to the right of it, there's my broken plastic from the shifter cable, which I'm planning on replacing the shifter cables anyway. But if you repeat what some YouTube videos do, this is all that you get, broken brackets. What finally did the trick for me is grabbing it from the top and then like repeatedly wiggling it and like finessing it and then like wiggling it some more. Then a little bit of, a little bit of gentle, gentle bending this way. Very, very small motions like this and then more up and down and then more like this and then more like that and then more like this. And eventually it just like came loose on its own and then I was able to do what was in the YouTube videos. These cars, mine's from 2006, they're starting to get old. And I'm gonna, and the biggest pro tip is dropping this axle. <clears throat> I recommend the nice fat gloves. I'm going to put it through the wheel here. And I'm going to grab. Upon using this grip tool, both of the brackets momentarily broke off of the shift cable, but yet it was difficult to still remove, but not as impossible. At times I gave up and switched gears and switched back and forth between steps to attempt differently. Uh, so that's why you might see the slave cylinder still attached in the shot. And as we can see with the shifter cable out of the way, I can actually begin to reach, not the bolt immediately next to it, but the bolt up there. Chapter 15, optional. Now's a great time to drain that transmission oil. While we're here, we're also going to drain the transmission fluid, the, sorry, the transmission oil, because it'll make the transmission lighter. Chapter 16, remove the transmission bolts. Pro tips, track where the bolts go in a cardboard cutout and use extensions, lots of them. Stop. What you are about to see is the improper way of supporting the engine and transmission. In the video, we only use a transmission jack. You must place two jacks, one under the engine and one under the transmission. We were lucky that the transmission was not irreparably damaged when we removed it. Support the engine and the transmission. That was a reading comprehension mistake on my part. The transmission jack is hold supporting the transmission. The transmission bolts are out. Basically, just use a lot of cursing and extensions. The bottom A bolt is one of the most annoying ones. We had to get out a triple square bit, and then you basically have to use a wrench on top of the mini tool. This is the triple square, and this is pretty much the maximum length that will fit into the A hole on the transmission. Mine is a size 10, but yours might be different. So basically, we got it out by putting this into the A hole, and then unwinding it and to actually break it loose it, mine was really old and really stuck and i had to use uh, the crow foot the crow foot with a wrench attached to it but all the bolts are loosened on the transmission chapter 17 removing the transmission mounts the transmission must be supported and the engine must also be supported with its own jack stand the next phase is just removing the four bolts on the side brackets of the transmission. So on that bracket as well as this bracket. And then we're going to slowly pull it out and slowly drop it. Comment if you are stuck on any specific steps, by the way, that I do not cover in this video. Because I'm always looking for stuff and I'm happy to comment any of the specific bolts. Okay, so we've basically... Sorry for not filming it, but we've removed the left training mount. That was easy. Just follow the instructions, I'll post a link. I also can make a sub video. Right side training mount, also easy. The bolts around, pain in the butt, cause half of them were rusty on my end. Basically follow the guides and forums, leave a comment below if you need more specific. I'm more than happy to elaborate. Sorry this was frustrating at times, so I might have skipped a few steps on a couple of bolts, you'll end up like Googling, trying to find the answers. I completely understand that. So I hope this video is a good launch point. Leave a comment, I'll find you the answer if I don't know it. Chapter 18, pulling out the transmission. As soon as we removed the last tranny mount on the right with my dad holding it from underneath, a small gap appeared between the engine and the tranny. Thank you. 
Chapter 19. Doing whatever you're there to do while you have the transmission out. In our case, we did a new flywheel, new clutch, new pressure plate, and new release bearing. Your finger and you move it around the circle, you can feel the bump. Here it is, the bump. Because oh my God, one I see of them it. Is broke, bent badly. And uh, as you go around, it'll bum, 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 and that's the sound. We wipe down the transmission from the inside. This is the destroyed bearing. See, it moved over. Now, first, second, or sorry, first. Second, middle, third, fourth, pull it back to the left, fifth, sixth. And that's how the transmission works, pretty cool. Transmission's ready to go back in. The new dual mass flywheel is installed. The two marker trick works perfectly for torquing it down. Now we're just putting this alignment tool in and putting the clutch on. There are better guides that are already out there for this. So we won't go into too much detail on installing the clutch. Here we're just doing the sequential torquing procedure, so when you put the flywheel on, you're supposed to torque them a little bit in sequence to distribute the torquing. You're also supposed to do the same for the pressure plate, so you're not supposed to completely torque down one and then torque down another. You're supposed to partially torque them all down and go in a star pattern. So that's what you're seeing here. We're also using an alignment tool. Basically the procedure to put it back together is the same in reverse. But it is always a little annoying when all the YouTube videos are like, just follow the steps I did in reverse and it's exactly the same because sometimes you need tips, help and tricks to put stuff back together. So I'm gonna talk about it a bit. Chapter 20, reinsert the transmission. Pro tip, this is very easy with the transmission jack. Gently wobble, gently angle. Chapter 21, reinstall the right side transmission mount. To get the right side transmission mount back in place, at first it's at an angle. If it's not at the right height, you play around with your transmission jack. The chain was a little in the way, but ultimately you thread the bolts in by hand as much as they're threadable because they'll be at an angle a little bit. Starting with the top ones, I used a impact wrench to actually pull it. And as I was bolting the top bolts, the transmission jack kind of aligned, so you put all the bolts loosely. It aligned it pulled itself tight. Chapter 22, reconnect the clutch hydraulic slave cylinder. Basically, I'm finagling with the slave cylinder and putting on the slave cylinder line. I'm putting on the wrench vertically, angling it, and then twisting it in order to get the slave cylinder back on line, uh, line back in. And then I've reached a point where I need to use the 12 millimeter. The reason I'm not filming the car is it's because it's like pretty difficult to film that angle. So I'm using this crow foot guy to get the slave cylinder hose line connected back all the way. I tried putting on this transmission mount and it fits up perfectly. Um, so this is pretty well supported already. And while I have it all on a jack and on a jack stand over there, uh, it'll probably be easier to do the reconnections on this side. And then once everything is reconnected, then we'll put the transmission back, mount back in place to make life a lot easier. And yeah, um, aside from that, then we'll just proceed with the reassembly. On a 987 with this guy in the way, right? So we initially got the slave cylinder hydraulic line in by hand. Now it's the crow's foot. I'm going to put it on. I'm going to twist it. I'm going to take it off. 
and I'm gonna get it most of the way done by hand and pull it off. And you put it on by hand and you press on the crow foot and you take it off by hand. And rinse repeat until it's tight. We're most of the way. You have to take the bleeder nipple rubber off. And then when it's most of the way, you put an extension on this guy, parallel, and then you just press it and it's gonna turn the crow foot for you. Make sure there's space between the bleeder guy. And that's how you tighten the slave cylinder on a 987. Leave a comment below if you need any more help or details. Chapter 23, reinstall the left side transmission mount. Chapter 24, test run. First test run with the transmission and everything connected back. I'm happy to report the first test run was an immense success. It didn't stall out in second and third, <clears throat> um, which initially made me suspect that I did something massively wrong. But then I remembered the CV axles aren't connected and that's like no resistance. So we'll only be able to test the stall test, but the CV axles spin. There's no issue with the clutch pedal at all. All the speeds go in, the shift cable's connected, satisfying as usual I might add I don't know it's probably placebo that it's a little better with the new gear oil so now we're just going to get everything back inside transmission shield metal brackets underbody shielding exhaust and then we're done chapter 25 reconnecting the axles Chapter 26, reconnect the sway bar. Chapter 27, reinstall the exhaust mount and metal brace. Chapter 28, test run number two, with the new clutch installed. Chapter 29, 
reinstall the exhaust. At this point, the wheels come back off. We connect again those three flange bolts on each side. I also took the liberty of applying exhaust gasket sealer and installing new exhaust gaskets. Chapter 30 Reinstall the shield and the aluminum metal braces. Chapter 31, reinstall the underbody panel. Same stuff, you want to go from the middle out to avoid bending it and breaking the plastic. It can get brittle with age. Consider subscribing if this video helped you on your transmission replacement journey. Cool. Any words of Wisdom.